Hello everyone, I'm Alan Thrall here at Untamed Strength Gym in Sacramento, California, and this is the first Untamed lesson. I have a few topics that I want to talk about, educate, inform, and so I'm going to take the next few weeks to discuss one topic per week. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my recent Instagram posts, monolift, combo rack, or power rack. What do you pick? I'm not going to be going in depth reviewing monolifts, combo racks, and power racks. I'm just going to be talking about some of the pros and cons to each of those pieces of equipment. First up, let's talk about the power rack. With a power rack, you can perform squats, bench press, deadlifts or rack pulls at varying heights, overhead press if your rack is tall enough or if you're short enough. If your rack is too short or you're too tall, you can always press outside of the rack. Or you can spend more money on a taller rack, but this can be limited by your ceiling height. If you have the right spotter arms, you can do pin presses outside of the rack. Uh, you can curl in a squat rack, I guess. You can do band work for the big three. You can do reverse band work for the big three. Although not all power racks have band peg holes, like these elite FTS racks at Untamed Strength. You can still wrap a band around the bottom or top cross members, but the adjustments and band tension is very limited. In a power rack, you can do pin work, like pin squats or pin bench, which can be incorporated into your routine just as variations. It might be used for injury rehabilitation, but most importantly and most commonly, the safety arms act as spotters if you fail a lift. There are other things you could do with the power rack, like, I don't know, Jefferson rack pulls, but for sake of brevity, I'll just stop there. There's not a whole lot a power rack can't do. It is the most useful of the three pieces of equipment mentioned in this video. For most commercial, privately owned, garage, personal training, or warehouse gyms, a power rack is gonna be your best bet. But not everyone likes power racks. <gasps> so let's talk about the combo rack. In a combo rack, you can squat, bench, overhead press, I guess, if you're in a garage by yourself. If you're in a powerlifting gym, would not recommend doing this. Leave the combo rack open for squats and bench press. Unless this is your only option because everything else is taken, in that case, go for it. Most combo racks, Aleco, ER, and Texas Strength Systems are two inch by two inch pieces of metal. They're not heavy, they're rarely ever bolted to the ground or platform, and most don't have band peg capabilities because they're mainly used for powerlifting competitions. They're easily portable, and you're not using bands for competition. Some combo racks, like the Rogue Fitness combo rack, is heavy duty and you can do banded bench press without bolting it down. Obviously because you're laying on the bench that's connected to the rack, but also because it has band peg holes for band pegs. Uh, you can do rack pulls or pin squats in a combo rack. You can do pin bench, although it gets a little unstable the higher the safeties are. And on that, the safeties are actually only supposed to be used for bench press. The Rogue website even says, the spotter arms are also easy to remove when you switch over to squats. Thank you for calling Rogue Fitness. For customer service, press one. For quoting, for product information, press four. For return. Thank you for calling Rogue Fitness. My name is Troy, how can I help you with that? Yeah, hey, my name's Adam Paul. I got a question about y'all's y'all's Rogue combo rack. When I'm doing squats, can I use them daggum spotters or am I supposed to take them out? So is it like the bench slash squat rack or? Yeah, so the spotter arms would be just for benching. Why is that? What am I supposed to do for squats? What if I fail a daggum squat? I, I don't, no, trust me, I understand. But I'm going by all the pictures and I'm only seeing it for the bench. I'm going to verify just to double check for you. Appreciate it. Have you tried putting the spotter arms on there or no? Yeah, they're on, but the website says that to remove them when you switch over to squats. I'm wondering why the heck that is. Trey, you find any information there? These are more for like powerlifting meets. They're not, if you look at a powerlifting meet, they're not using spotters for um, squat racks. They're using actual people to grab each side. Due to it being a combo rack, that's just a common thing with combo racks, because they are mainly used for uh, regulated powerlifting meets, where by design, they don't have those spotter arms on the back side. All right, I'm here in my daddy's shed, and I'm just gonna yolo it and you know hope it holds up. But I appreciate your you taking the time, Trey. Yeah, no problem, buddy. Have a good day. You too. Uh, 
from a safety standpoint, a combo rack is just less safe than a power rack. So let's talk about some other things that a combo rack does do. You can adjust the height of the uprights without needing to unload a barbell. This is helpful in a meet setting or if a group of training partners is squatting together. Some combo racks, like the Rogue Fitness Combo Rack, allows you to angle the uprights inward so that bigger lifters who can't grip the bar inside of the uprights can now grip outside the uprights. So other than those couple of cool features, why the heck would you need a combo rack? Well, it's specific to powerlifting. Powerlifters like to train with what they use in competition. If you want to host a powerlifting meet, you can't host a sanctioned meet in a squat rack, you need a combo rack. Some lifters like the freedom of squatting with a combo rack. There aren't four uprights surrounding the barbell. Some people bump their plates against the front and or back uprights of a power rack. This only makes sense to me and I really only sympathize with big lifters like six foot, four inches tall, 350 pound linemen. If you're 165 pounds and you're complaining about bumping into the rack as you walk out of squat or you're claustrophobic in the power rack, you probably just need to clean up your walkout. With that said, you could just purchase a deeper squat rack or a power rack with two by three inch uprights instead of three by three inch uprights like the R3 versus the Rogue Monster Light series. And a monolift. With a monolift, you can squat. Yep, that's about it. This is the most specialized piece of powerlifting equipment money can buy. I made a video about monolifts. You can check that video out in the top right-hand corner of the screen. The main benefit of using a monolift is not needing to walk out your squat. Once the lifter stands up, the J-hooks swing away, allowing them to squat without moving their feet and stepping back. Once they're finished, the hooks swing back into position, the lifter racks the bar. This isn't just for lazy people who don't wanna walk out their squat. It can be helpful for lifters wearing gear, like a squat suit or squat briefs, or even people who tightly wrap their knees. Being restricted by gear makes walking difficult and dangerous, especially when you're walking backwards with hundreds of pounds on your back. Now there are lifters who do wear gear and still walk out of their squats, but that's a little more rare to see. Another pro to the mono lift, if you have bands and chains loaded up and attached to the bar, walking back can quickly get hairy. So not having to do that is helpful. This is especially true if you're walking back to a box because then you run the risk of bumping the box on your walkout. So not needing to worry about all that stuff makes the mono lift the preferred squat apparatus for some people. Monolifts also allow the uprights to be adjusted in and out and up and down, so multiple lifters can train together at the same time on the same rack, regardless of weight on the bar. You can do banded squats and good mornings, even reverse band squats and good mornings. It's just a little more difficult to rig up reverse bands, and it's just overall less customizable than a power rack. Some downsides to the monolift. Well, other than the fact that you can really only squat out of it, you need a training partner to fully operate the monolift. So you solo cellar dwellers probably have no business purchasing a monolift. They aren't very safe because if you fail a squat, it's just Jesus Christ spotting you. If you do have training partners around, spotters can help you stand back up and rack the weight, but if you suddenly dump the barbell, nobody's catching that. Some people do use safety straps, but the monolift clearly says don't use safety straps. These are only intended for suspended good mornings. They're not made for catching 800 pounds. And there's no way to bolt the monolift to the ground unless you get a welder to rig up some sort of secure contraption. That's it. If I missed anything, comment down below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next week's Untamed Lesson number two. And always remember, Trend on Time!